In 1977, the scene changed to Texas. Darrell Royal moved up to a position as athletic director, and Fred Akers returned to Texas to become their head coach. I was not Darrell Royal. I was not there to replace Darrell uh, in any way. I succeeded him, and now it's Fred Akers' turn. I'm going to be Fred Akers. And Earl uh, is going to need to adjust to me, and, and he did. Campbell, at Aker's suggestion, dropped 20 pounds and reported for the fall season at 225. I weighed like 245, I think, and uh, I never forget this. Fred Akers called me in his office, and I knew Coach Akers from my freshman year because he was a running back coach. And he calls me in, and this guy, you got to understand Coach Akers. I mean, he gets right in your face, and he's looking at you. He said, you want to run the football next year? I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, you know what the I formation is? I said, yeah, I think I've seen it a couple of times. He said, I'm going to tell you something. You go all the way down to 225 pounds because you're going to be the man next year. You're going to carry the ball about 35 times a game. I said, is that right? He said, yeah, I'm going to make Ham Jones the fullback and you're going to be the halfback. You understand that? So I immediately got with Frank Medina and I would work out with Frank. My days would start back then, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. Once Earl went to Frank, and he said, you know, I want to do this, and Frank was relentless. It would be dark, and I would be running around the stadium, two or three hundred sit-ups before class, punching back. Then he'd throw me in the steam room. Earl would work with him early in the morning, work all day, and then come back and work with the play other players in the afternoon. And he, I was afraid he was going to get burned out because he was really, really taxing himself physically. I think that the thing that, that Frank Medina taught me above everything that if you want something and you really, really want it bad enough, you'll do anything. That year, 1977, turned into a legendary season for Earl Campbell and the Texas Longhorns. I knew that I needed to get into a two-back offense and there aren't many options when you go when you make that decision. And we ran the split back beer and the I formation and the I came to because of Earl Campbell. In UT's opening game against Boston College, Campbell got 87 yards on 17 carries and he scored a touchdown. As UT won easily, 44 to nothing. In the second game, UT blew out Virginia, 68 to nothing. As Campbell produced 156 yards on 19 carries. The trend continued against Rice, with UT winning 72 to 15. Campbell, 131 yards on 13 carries, and four touchdowns. The fourth game against bitter rival Oklahoma saw Campbell deliver 100 yards again, as UT won 13 to 6. Steve Hall trapped that defensive uh, back somehow. I mean, he was so big, too. I just think he just kind of laid on the guy like this. And here I came, and I saw it. And I remember hurling over the guy and ran into the end zone. What a high that was. And I just kind of set the ball down and walked off like always. But I deep down inside, I was so happy. It was unbelievable. In the fifth game of the year, Texas defeated Arkansas 13-9 as the Tyler Rose notched another superior performance. The run that he made against Arkansas uh, on the little screen pass that we threw to him, um, you can call it a pass, but it was, it was behind the line of scrimmage, and then he made a heck of a run to win the ball game. Fred Akers has enough uh, confidence in me. Clock's running out. Randy McKeech is a quarterback. He threw me in that screen pass. I swore I was in the end zone before my knees hit. But I knew I saw one guy in front of me in the end zone. So what I figured I'd do to him was lower my head and run over him. But the ref said my knee went down. And I remember sticking that ball over there in the end zone. Now, Campbell sensing a very special year began to thunder. Against SMU, the sixth game of the year, UT won 30-14 to as Campbell burned the ponies for 213 yards and one touchdown. Seventh game pitted Texas against Texas Tech. Final 
will score. The Longhorns 26, the Red Raiders nothing. Zero Campbell again rushed for over 100 yards. Another highlight film against the University of Houston, rushing for 173 yards and three touchdowns. The UT won 35 to 21. The thing that I will always remember about that Houston game is the night before when we started our team meeting, Earl couldn't make it. He was sick. He had 104 temperature. I mean, he, he was vomiting. He couldn't keep anything on his stomach. We put him to bed. And the next morning, uh, the first thing I did was get and check on Earl, and he still had a temperature, he was still feeling weak, and I thought, good gracious, what a time to have to go without, without a guy like Earl. I think that's the game that Freddie has really made up in his mind that I'm going to just let it all hang out. I'm going to give it to him, just see how much he can stand. All he did that day was gain 190 yards rushing, uh, and he was weak, but he wanted that game. He really wanted it. I think in the uh, south end zone, I, on my third touchdown, I ran down on my knees and I said, thank God. And I think I did like that when it was all over. I dropped, the, set the ball down and got down and said, thank God, and walked off. I think to this day in 1991, I am the only one that ever knocked Bevo down. And I think I did it during that game. He did run into Bevo in the end zone, that's right, in Rice Stadium. Against TCU in the ninth game of the year, Campbell rushed for 153 yards and scored two touchdowns. Texas won 44-14. to Tenth game of the year, UT 29, Baylor 7, Campbell 181 yards on 32 carries, one touchdown. In his final regular season game as a Longhorn, Campbell delivered what has to be considered a class performance against the Aggies. Carrying for 228 yards, he scored four touchdowns as Texas defeated A&M 57-28. Coming down to town, Fred Akers walked over, he said, you know, you want to win the Heisman Trophy? I said, yeah. He said, tell you what you do. You give me something over 100 yards and you'll win it. We told Earl that he's going to have to handle the ball 30 times in that ball game, and that each 30 need to be his best of the year. Uh, he doesn't need to leave there with anyone in the stands not singing his praises. That if he wins this ball game, he'll win the Heisman Trophy. Every time I got that ball in my hand, I thought about what he told me coming on into that field. You give me 100 yards and you do it. You know, Earl's the kind of guy that you forget about as a receiver. That was my nickname brick hands, a brick house or something. So in that game against a and we had kind of been working during the week on this, uh, it's kind of like a flare right to the left. Except for I was the guy that was going to be catching the ball and doing the flare. It was a pass, believe it or not, that we'd thrown several times in practice, but never in a game. But Randy McKeaton was going to take the ball in the other offense and roll over to their right. Well, for some reason, all those and then people thought they should go over there. And I was just standing over there all by myself. And McKeechan said <laughs> that he swore that he's seen every inch of my eyes get that big. Saying, I, I don't know, don't, he said, just don't drop it, just catch it. And I got it and I just ran all the way on the left side all by myself. It just broke the whole stadium. I mean, it got deathly quiet around there uh, when he hit that seam up that sideline. No one expected him to do it. Earl Campbell produced 1,744 yards on 267 carries, and that's an average per try of six and a half yards. Also add 19 touchdowns. Those numbers were good enough for Campbell to lead the nation in both rushing and scoring. Total UT stats for the Tyler Rose, 4,440 yards on 765 carries for a 5.8 yards per carry average. The honors were soon incoming. Top runner in Southwest Conference history. Top rusher in Texas history. Nominated for the Heisman Trophy. Could it be that the Tyler Rose would win the Heisman Trophy? Earl called me one night and said to me, he said, Mama, 
He said, you know this thing about the Heisman Trophy? He said, they were talking to me about the Heisman and said, I never had no idea, uh, had no thoughts about no Heisman Trophy. He says, I've just been playing ball and have been doing the things I'm supposed to do to the best of my ability. He said, but I never had any idea about winning the Heisman Trophy. At first I thought it was just another award. I thought it was just something that everybody's going to know. What's this big deal about the Heisman Trophy, you know? And I don't think I understood it until I really got there and started reading who all his name was on the trophy in the lobby of the downtown athletic club. And then I said, you know, my name is going to be printed on that one day. <laughs>